So, Sophia, it's so great to see you again. I'm happy um, to have the chance to talk to you. We met in Cambodia by chance, I must say, and we were so pleased, my wife and I, to see your marvelous products. Um, I have to ask you a quick start. Um, where are you born? Thank you, Professor. It was my pleasure, my, a big honor to uh, host you at our uh, workshop in Golden Seal in the case, right, in Cambodia. So I was born in Phnom Penh, nearby Phnom Penh, in the suburb of Phnom Penh, uh, some 50 mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and 68 years ago. So it was in 1965, yes. So long time ago. Long time ago. And yes. um, I have seen this marvelous picture which your husband gave me. Uh, I can show you that. Then I can see your, uh, an old photo of your family. Yes. Um, what did your family do? Um, I think. Uh, hmm? Yes, my I was lucky to be born with a family that uh, very much uh, love Cambodia, love its country, and uh, are very um, I mean, thankful to what they got to be. And uh, I come from uh, my 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 father, my mom uh, come from uh, south of Cochin, China, where. Uh, uh, that pictures was taken, and the pictures of my great grandparents and my grandfather who was holding this colonial cast, and the pictures was taken in the beginning of 1900. And uh, at that time, he was working with uh, the French already, uh, French uh, people that came for uh, the colonial uh, protectorate in Cambodia and to colonize also in Vietnam. So um, they, uh, they were a successful, uh, uh, how you say, land owners and they have uh, a very good education. So my mom also has this education. So um, that's how she, uh, when uh, Cambodia, uh, South Vietnam became uh, in 1947 after the um, how you say, um, after the uh, Second World War, it became uh, Vietnamese. So uh, he sent my, my mom to go to Phnom Penh so that she can uh, start a new life and uh, build her own career. And that's how she was capable of, of, of uh, restarting that life and may, uh, meet my father who was in uh, Phnom Penh at that time. Yeah. Um, when I've heard you, uh, your family then skipped the place and went to France. What did you do in France? In fact, uh, my father was uh, uh, a diplomat and he was, we were lucky to leave Cambodia before, just one, one year before the country uh, was collapsed and uh, the Khmer Rouge took power. So we went to Uruguay first, it's not, it's not France directly. We went to Uruguay in Tomidio, and where my father normally used to uh, have to do his three years, but he did only one year and uh, he lost his job. And that's how we asked for, for political asylum in, in France. And that's how we flew for, like me from, uh, from uh, France to, uh, from, uh, Montevideo to Paris in uh, July uh, 1975. Right. And uh, how did you work? Uh, what did you do in France? Uh, my father was having a difficulty first to be integrated as a and finding job because, but luckily he spoke French and uh, it was easy for him. He applied for many places, but his uh, curriculum was so, he was, uh, he was uh, uh, high, uh, highly uh, skilled. <laughs> so mm. he was applying for 
Peugeot, uh, uh, because we end up in uh, Colmar from Paris, we decide to leave Colmar yeah. in Paris, mm -hmm. and that's how we, uh, we arrived there and uh, we applied for a job at the Peugeot um, factory, and that's how they said, oh, you, your CV is so uh, wonderful, <laughs> we have a position for you. <laughs> Uh, finally, uh, we have some friend who helped him to find, and he was a civil servant in um, in uh, the agricultural uh, department on uh, water management, and mm. he was a carries and ho so ho mm. his life was really uh, peaceful after that uh, until his retirement. I and uh, you could speak, of course, fr French as well. You are educated in French. Yes, I, I was educated mostly in France. Uh, when I uh, arrived in 1975, I was 10 years old. So I need to go first at, uh, in the foreign classes. That means I were among with all these Portuguese, Spanish, uh, uh, Maghreb, from Maghreb, and uh, we. Uh, no, we start to learn how to speak French and oh. then I integrated to the class normally, but I was only 11 years old and then we had to be uh, uh, with uh, one, two years really late. Uh, so uh, uh, I, after one year at integrating one class, I, I asked to go I, uh, right away to the sixth grade. So that's how uh, I, I, I I, I just go straight until mm -hmm. university uh, to uh, in, uh, commercialization, technique of commercialization, uh, two years. And after my university graduation, I said, oh, I always dream of going back. And that's how my first uh, lead letter was written to uh, His uh, Majesty, the, the King Tianu, for to apply to volunteer and work at the refugee camp in 1988. What have you studied at the university? Uh, in Colmar, in Colmar. And which topics? Uh, uh, commercial, technique of commercialization. Wow. Right. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that after that. I just, I, I just came back and worked as a humanitarian uh, uh, volunteer in uh, the refugee camp in Thailand. I didn't uh -huh. do anything. I didn't work in, in France, in fact. And that's, of course, in France, you have met your husband, Patrick. Yes, uh, I met him just two years before I, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I leave uh, to, uh, 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 to um, Thailand. So um, uh, he was He's from Brittany, and Patrick uh, came to work as a banker in uh, pa Paris, Paribas, BNP, mm -hmm. Paribas Bank. And uh, he was uh, uh, in, um, as a, already a very uh, high position as a young banker. He was like 24, 25 years old, and he already in charge of the the small and uh, medium, uh, and he has his, uh, 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 and, uh, how you say, he has this authority to give land or, uh, and things like that. That's how my mom met him first in, uh, in, in the bank. Right. To, to survive, my mom need to open restaurant to support the four children because I'm the eldest one and I have one brother. Uh, and two other sisters. And so as a civil servant, you, uh, you, the salary of my father is not enough. So she's a very entrepreneur and take, take this decision to open two restaurants. One called the name, uh, name um, the, tomb, the Temple of Uncle at the uh, uh, train station nearby. Mm -hmm. And the second one is um, Nagaraja. It was uh, uh, the place where, where she asked to the bank to uh, support her, to give her loan for, for, for that opening. Mm. Uh, but why going back to Cambodia? Why did uh, you stay in France? Um, you know, I, I 
I when I was in Montevideo, the day when my parent, I saw my parent cry, and I didn't know what, but I know that uh, 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 we couldn't go back to Cambodia. And for me, I have a great memory of Cambodia, and uh, returning to Cambodia is always my wish. Even when I went to school in France, I was always thinking of Cambodia, mm. and that's what uh, I, 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 I'm very grateful to whatever France have given me this possibility to go to school, to be educated, and uh, really uh, appreciate what is, is that country for life. But for me, it's not enough because I know that I was fortunate and I was uh, mostly um, uh, uh, being supported by my parents and things like that. And then uh, uh, I always, uh, uh, in memory of my my aunt, uncle, cousin who mm -hmm. passed away during the Khmer Rouge, I couldn't stay like that, just being satisfied of, of what yeah. life offering me as this. It's it's not me. It's it. I have to give back what I have I've been given by by God by 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 what I've been lucky to be spared. Mm -hmm why I need to go back and uh, really dedicate my life to, to what have been not uh, uh, those who have not been uh, fortunate uh, during this uh, uh, hardship and, and, and conflicts and things like that. What were the general situation in Cambodia when you came back? Oh, I, I couldn't go back to Cambodia yet at that time, but I know that uh, a lot of fighting, shelling, bombing, and and many uh, bombs uh, around uh, across the, the the border and things like that. So when I am on the other side, because I was at uh, in Syrian, uh, mostly on this eastern part of, of Thailand. So the camp is close to Syrian, like seventy five kilometers, something like that, and we need to go and. If dirty road every day and things like that. We couldn't sleep. Sometimes I can't sleep too there in the wow. camp. But, uh, we have to go home back. So the situation of the camp, it's not that easy because um, there are like, I don't remember, but it's around 40, 50,000 people uh, just packed in one kilometer square of, 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 of land. So you imagine it's very concentrated and they are not allowed to go outside. and. Uh, but they have been uh, uh, helping uh, with rice, uh, what uh, the basic necessities they were given. That's all, that's all, all the privilege. Uh, horrible. Yes, uh, horrible. But to see what I've been doing there mostly is to assist and help uh, the individuals, the family that uh, the husband has been to war and and they, they, are, they have nothing left because the, the husband died and things like that. And also with the orphans who have lost their parents or sometimes one. So that was my mission to help those, those vulnerable, uh, unfortunate uh, uh, people. Wow. And I was very happy to do it. I was in my element. You have done it excellently. Um, let me ask you, um, why is silk? Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> why silk? It it was not my 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 formation, as you saw, and it's I'm not uh, in in that uh, specialization. But um, one uh, after the peace agreement reached in ninety October ninety one, all the refugees at the border along the border camp along the Thai border mm. need to go back uh, repatriate back to mm. Cambodia. And that's how I came back with them, uh, came back with all the refugees and especially taking care of that, those often to uh, see them where they are, they are and how they are uh, integrated in the new family and if not, how to, uh, to take care of them. So when we, they were repatriated and I went uh, in Vanderbilt, uh, mostly in 1992 because all the Refugees mostly come from, from that part. So um, that's how 
I went around with motorcycle to all around to see all the different because they are packed with different uh, places. So very very long trajet uh, every day with shelling. I heard the shelling still. It's not even they are at peace. You still see the hear the shelling even in Babylon at that time. No, it's not that easy. Uh, <laughs> a, a difficult time. Uh, you have. Uh, uh, even sometimes the Khmer Rouge reached to the village where we have set up this orphanage and they came to burn the village uh, house, the village's house. And when they reached to, to our orphanage, they said, oh, don't go inside of it. There's nothing, it's only orphan. And that's why we were safe. I was, well, we, we all were, were so scared. So all these small things in life that make days by days survive until now, it's, it's really something that uh, uh, I cherish a lot, even if it was uh, difficult, but uh, we, get, we get through it and we were, we were able to give um, uh, education to all these orphans. Now they have been uh, having their family, they have their own um, um, uh, job and they have a decent job. Some are having very good salary, so we are lucky. But for me, it's not enough, as I said. I do just for orphans, but I said, I, can, I need to do something else because my orphans getting older. They are in, some of them are almost on their 40s now, and they have four or five kids. But uh, the youngest one, I still have like eight orphans at the, the orphanage in Battenborough. They are from uh, 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 14 to 18, something like that. And we will finish with the eight, these eight, and that's all. But I said, to, 10 years later, after setting up this orphanage uh, in 2002, I said, I need to do something for other people. Mm. And that this time, uh, it was with uh, the, the, all the ladies uh, that live uh, in the rural area, have no education background, and giving them something, a tool to be... Uh, uh, to sustain the, 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 the livelihood of them and the family. And that's how it started with the uh, Golden Seal uh, uh, PHR project. Uh, but uh, what, what, one feature which I like especially with you is this very natural approach towards silk. Um, you had things which I have never seen before in the world. So. Thank you. It's too much an order for me. No, it's uh, that, it, you know, this project is come from my heart. This is, uh, I asked, I told you I didn't know anything at departure, but for me, uh, I was keen to search deeper to understand what is the Khmer Silk. Mm. And the Khmer Silk come from this endemic species, uh, ye yellow, that when it it spin around itself. It's been a yellow thread around itself. That thread is the cocoon thread that we use for, for, oh. for spinning later on. But um, uh, it's it's very uh, um, to give back to do be able to do that is to give back pride and dignity mm. to the fracture to the structure during this uh, uh, period of uh, Khmer Rouge to give back to these people I mean to believe that they are they worth something and mm -hmm. they are something that th there is something for them that is uh, uh, not forgotten but is inside of themselves you have just to revive it back it's like phoenix reviving from its ash it's the same thing so by giving this mean to those women that lives in this rural area they are they they didn't know that they have this, this uh, miracle uh, hands and dexterity to be mm. able to do something. But we need 10 years of training before being able to show to the people mm. who, and like you who came to see us, we need 10 years of education, training, constant training until we are able to say, oh, we, are op we can open to show to the public what we are thriving for this uh, uh, commercial species and mm. species that is disappearing. 
because of its few gel quantity that gel uh, uh, once you breed them you don't have the same quantity as the sh the white silk uh, that is common around the world but this is really a precious uh, that biodiversity that need, need to be uh, uh, taken care of for and and also to be uh, um, protected um but uh, again what i like is that <laughs> Um, we started a production of silk in the very beginning um, with uh, the special trees in uh, nature and it's a long process until you have a final product. Exactly, sir. Because of fact, uh, what we do, it's really a little bit different from so far of all uh, the silk that you can see everywhere. Some specialize in part of the dyeing, some specialize in breeding, some specialize in make viewing, but we start from the beginning. We mm. start from the mulberry plantation. That mm. is essential raw material that is needed to feed the silkworm. And that's how we need to do from scratch, from the box, from the A to Z. And I mean, from planting mulberry, taking care of this mulberry, uh, like and then breeding the silkworm. When we have got the cocoon, we need to spin it to take the yarn to to clean it to twist it, and and the process is very in process to reach to the 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 weaving. Because not only you have to spin twist, then you have to the, degam the it, and then you have to uh, the, uh, 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 make choose among the fewest. Uh. The thread that you got, the finest one, to do something exceptional because you can't go for, 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 for uh, how you say, quantity. You uh. need to go very high quality, but two, three pieces, maximum a, a month. That's all we can do. And each piece, as you have been, you saw that uh, uh, during your visit, that uh, one piece uh, can take six months to a year, to two years. It's depend on the pattern. So we specialize ourselves in e cut and brocade mm. and the combination of two at the end. So these are our specialty because what we have seen uh, from the description on the on the wall of the temple, Angkor Temple, that's what we saw our queen wearing. It's mostly these two techniques combined, e cut and brocade. And that's inspired us to do in, in, the, in the name, in the honor, that two specialties. And we were not taught about the brocade, for example. We took seven years to reach to the point that you saw it. Wow. Well, so you, you make, you, nobody teach us because there's no transmission. Mm. To, and even our e card it's something that is completely different from the traditional e card because we first start with traditional e card much more geometric, repetitive, and then we start to ah. go further to say, look, we can take any uh, drawing or painting we can do and re recalculate it and reshape it by oh. not in masking and hiding and uh, uh, dying many steps to reach to the uh, uh, a drawing that we want to, to be almost uh, uh, the same, and that's how is ECAT about ECAT. So when we talk to ECAT, people say, "Oh, I, I didn't know that ECAT is like that." He said, "Yes, we do something else." <laughs> and though, I don't know what we can call it if it's not ECAT. Yes. Yeah, but that's uh, one of the reasons why Harry Harrison Ford and the BBC came to you. So you got got a lot of positive reactions from even from the VIPs. Yes, sir. and that is our, uh, our, our, our retribution, something like that, because we are happy that people come more and more to learn and understand what is this, uh, this project. And uh, we, uh, we were lucky to have uh, all this VIP to come each time to, to visit us. And we hope that in the future it will be more.
Yeah, uh, of course, it, it must be. It must be. Uh, okay. Tell me about the situation of uh, women uh, at your project. What, uh, what do you do? Uh, the, the women, when they first came, they were single first, and they uh, mostly uh, rely on, you know, cutting small branches to uh, sustain their life, to, to do the kitchen and that's all. There's no other opportunities. Mm. So when I first arrived in 2002, I, 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 I let everyone come in. So those, those who are interested in, so I said, I will give you uh, training uh, and give you a, a salary, a small salary, mm. so that you can come and learn without paying anything. And then you can uh, feed your family at the same time. And that's how it was started. And uh, they are really, unfortunate. some that the shoes were mostly, I choose mostly those who are uh, often one side or both sides because they live with the uncle, the, the, the aunt, uncle, grandmother, and things like that. So um, once they have this maturity, knowing, having this skill, they work, they have money, they bring money, they buy land, they buy car, they buy motorcycle, then they said, oh, I'm, I'm, I feel different. I feel now more, much more, I have a power in my life my family, I bring money to the family, mm -hmm. and I can educate, bring my children to school. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that, that's how the livelihood has been uh, really changing, and they are really respected into the, the villagers, mm -hmm. among the villagers. And, and that is also what is uh, uh, my, uh, my happiness to see that I give a new life to these people, a new way of, yeah. of, of seeing the world, of uh, 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 educating the children and being, uh, having a voice in this family. And, um, and mostly, you know, in Cambodia, women, uh, even during the wedding, it's very symbolic. The women is the one who, who, who is holding a, um, a candle because she is the, the, the the Nagi, the, the daughter of the Naga, the, the, uh -huh. the big dragon. And when holding this, this uh, candle, it means you, you are leading the family. Uh -huh. So leading the family with this uh, wise and uh, comprehensive empathy, compassion, is a very good uh, way of uh, uh, bringing those, the family up to the to uh, the, 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 the 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 right way to live in harmony and, and serenity. Uh, well, what uh, what are the reactions of the public authorities? Do they like you? Do they give you money and funding? Oh no! <laughs> like they, no, I have no, I have no uh, no help. Uh, it's really hard, sir. To say frankly that uh, what we do so far, it's all from our own initiative. Uh, my my husband is a very lovely man who always needs to help and ready to uh, uh, sell the properties in France, the properties that we have here, to be able to to sustain this project. We have nobody to sustain it, and and. And, and some few uh, customers that come and buy, but it's not it's not for all to 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 stay in the, the project. It's a long project because it has been we have been doing that for twenty one years already with COVID and things like that. Uh, let us talk about COVID. What happened uh, with COVID um, in Cambodia? Did the sales go down absolutely? Exactly. Since nine, uh, because we started uh, really beginning of 2020, mm. and uh, the country nobody is coming, so it was uh, uh, there's lockdown, and uh, we can only uh, start to really uh, go out in 2022. And um, but uh, 
22, end of 22, beginning of 23, it's okay. We have some tourists that came, but mm. not not sufficiently because we don't we didn't reach like our neighbors in Thailand and Vietnam uh, many tourism because uh, we are an extension of, of of the stay of other people. So when they come, it's already they have only two days and they don't have anything else to do. And I just see the temple and no uh -huh. project. So for me. Um, since um, April until now, oh my God, very difficult. Mm. Very difficult. No, no, no tourists, no, no, no cell, and, and, and it's it's very difficult for us. Yes. Uh, and uh, do you have a fan club of Europeans like myself? I declare myself <laughs> to be a, your greatest fans. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so you know, uh, yeah. Do you need to have a real European fan club? Thank you, sir. Thank you, you Professor. I, I hope I will have much more fan club. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your new plans? What, what do you do now? In, in, where do you see in two or five years? Two or five years. I, 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 we know that already in our workshop, we have that shop that is not uh, usable yet because as you when you went there, we have the, we have to take a, one of the workshop to be uh, as a shop because our shop has been uh, uh, ravaged by damaged by uh, chitter mite it, because it's mostly the, uh, make with food. So mm. the COVID, they have time to, because no no activities, they have time to eat very well. So we have nothing, no cow, no roof, and nothing. We need to re rehabilitate the, the shop, and then um, we have some. No, then make things, uh, hoping that uh, tourists will come up with other people, and a lot of people. And um, we plan also to have uh, uh, something also in the city, so that uh, those who have no time to come to our place because it takes time. One almost 50 minutes, one one hour for those who go by tuk tuk more than an hour to reach us. And um, so for those who have no time, they can come uh, directly uh, in the city and see uh, our product. Those who want to buy, yes, the shop. Okay. Um, so uh, let me ask you uh, when you look back, um, would you do it again? Oh yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I, uh, it is this this opportunity in life for each one is really unique, and my opportunity to be able to do whatever I need to do, I was I'm really grateful, and I'm ready to redo it anytime because. It is a privilege and an honor to, 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 to be part of this development, reconstruction, uh, life of life and uh, of country. And that's all my ancestors, my late parents always love to do it. They always love the country. And by doing so, I, I, I've been part of the dream and I've been realizing that dream. That's all I... And I need to say, I, I am very proud of being a Khmer. You could be very proud, extremely. Um, what question. could you do differently? Is there anything which you have said, um, I would do um, uh, change the marketing strategy. You, you sold um, years ago, very beautiful clothes. Um, I saw the photos on your website mm -hmm. and you made marvelous products. So would you do it um, re again? Um, is there a chance to restart uh, producing clothes? Um, yes, yes, but uh, it's mostly um, uh, clothes, things that people commission 
for example, we have something in the, in the uh, Cone Museum in uh, Germany. Mm. We have a piece of brocade that is uh, talk, uh, uh, dedicated to the, the flower of life in a cohort. Mm. And we, for example, a commission from, uh, from Japan by uh, uh, the highest priest, teaching toys to make the, the um, kimono, something okay. like that. So it is a piece sometimes take three years to make. Oh. <laughs> so long. Depend on, so we're doing that, but we don't gain money because we, we, we don't ask for a lot, but uh, that's how we cannot sustain because how can you sustain something that you, you have, you pay a lot of salaries for the whole team. It's three years uh, you have uh, to sustain at least one, one year, at least, yeah, three years, but uh, um, not even for some, some months only. But uh, how, uh, we, we, we do, we do, we still do the competition. We, 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 we are out it because this is to uh, defy uh, uh, those ladies to go further. This mm. is important. It's not to be content to stay at your level. You have to go always further to do mm. this marvelous thesis. During the COVID, for example, we, uh, we, we couldn't go, uh, all of them, all of us, the, only those who are on the place. So I said, look, this is a picture of the royal arm of, of Cambodia. You do that in five, five teams. And you do the ECAT, and when you have the ECAT, you 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 weave it with brocades around it. It took us four years. Oh. Oh. At 2019, and we finished in 2023, uh, uh, beginning of 23. Are you planning to um, market your products in Europe? To sell? Um, uh, if they would like, so yeah, no problem, but we have a very little, so. <laughs> no, that's very, that will change. I do, my own my force to help you. Um, so I, I, I'm, as I said, I'm a total fan of your products and of you. So you. let us uh, think about changing. Let me come to the final question. Um, mm -hmm. What advice would you give to young women? Um, because my, my listeners want to know, do you have one recommendation which is important for you? For the women, I mean, the, the people around the world is to uh, believe, to have a, a dream and to reach that dream, even if no matter how it is difficult, just believe on and 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 go for it. But as you know, that uh, what I'm doing, you have to do with respect to the nature. Mm. We do our own production with no chemical added. We use uh, um, uh, how you say uh, solar panels for creating our uh, electricity because we are so far away. So we have to do everything by ourselves, even uh, making the loom, we have the wood that done and we do it, everything that is nature. And about the dye, we take the bark of the leaves, the trees and leaves, roots to make our dye. Mm. So keep on pray, uh, doing whatever you dream of. Don't, uh, don't just uh, abandon it. Even if it's difficult, just keep on believing that you can do it. And I'm, I'm still doing for 21 years and, and I'm not abandoning it. I just keep on doing. And I said, there's only hope of above. There's only one eye from above that can see what is true in my heart and what I'm doing for my country. So, so those people with faith and with love, with compassion, empathy, they always succeed because both they can see it. Wow, so that was a very nice final word. 